This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello everyone. Um, in this session, we will talk about ACE protocol and cache coherency related concepts. Uh, so as you know, ACE, ACE stands for AXI coherency extensions. What does it mean is that it is the AXI protocol. ACE is nothing but AXI coherency extension. So AXI plus uh, co cache coherency related extensions. So when we say extensions, what exactly is the extensions we are talking about? It is all about the additional signals. Like in AXI, as you know, there are five channels, AW, uh, right channel, B channel, AR, and then you have read channel. So when we go to ACE protocol, we'll see that it is all these channels are there, the AXI channels, plus some additional signals added into existing channels. For example, into the AW channel, they will add AW snoop, AW domain, uh, same thing for a AR, uh, AR uh, snoop, AR domain. So there will be few signals they will add, which will help towards the cache coherency concept. Okay. Along with that, it has got three additional channels added, three new channels added, which are meant for snoop purpose, snooping purpose, I mean the, the cache coherency snoop purpose. And plus something called as read act and write act signaling. These are the signals, independent signals. Okay. So before we go into the depth of ACE protocol, let us try to understand what exactly is cache coherency. We have discussed the basics about cache coherency in the previous session. But let's again quickly revise and go a little deep into concept of cache coherency and how, what is that ACE protocol has to help with the cache coherency concept. Uh, so this would be the agenda for the ACE protocol related training. So we will be initially starting off with understanding the ACE overview, the protocol overview. Then we will be uh, talking about the ACE coherency model and uh, uh, then we will talk about cache state model. Then we will talk about ACE cache states. Uh, then what are the basic rules related to the cache states. Then we will be talking about transaction types and their overview. I mean, ACE achieves this concept of coherency by introducing some additional transactions. So we will be talking about those transaction types. Then we'll be talking about domains. Uh, what is the concept of domain with respect to cache coherency? Then we'll be going into the ACE protocol, like what are the ACE channels and what are the signals and the corresponding timing diagram with respect to each of these transactions. So first let us start off with the ACE protocol overview. See, ACE protocol provides system level coherency when sharing the data across caches. So what exactly is coherency? In a multi-processor system, the consistency of data stored in local caches L1 and L2 and main memory is called as coherency. What, is, what do we mean by consistency? Is that the data should be same. I mean, every processor should see the same data for a given location. Let's say we are talking about a specific location, 100. The, let's say assume I have a system with three processors, P1, P2, P3. All three of them, if they have the location 100 in their caches, they should see the same data for address 100 in all these caches. So basically the consistency of data stored in local caches L1 and L2 and the main memory. Call provides support for hardware coherent caches. See, uh, ca coherency can be, cache coherency can be achieved in two ways. One is software based coherency, one is hardware based coherency. Uh, our hardware based coherency is the optimal approach where the coherency is implemented by means of the hardware implementation. Software coherency is taken care by the processor instructions. Uh, the third one, the ACE coherency protocol ensures that all masters observe the correct data value at any given address location by enforcing that only one copy exists wherever, whenever a store occurs to a location. See, it makes sure that 
there is only one copy for throughout all these locations. So that is what ACE coherency protocol achieves. So that is that is the context in which we are talking about all these things. When we say the additional signals, the the transaction types, everything is to achieve this one line basically. For any given address location, only one copy should exist uh, where, where, whenever store occurs to the location. Now, what is the ACE coherency model? See, the ACE coherency protocol ensures that all masters observe the correct data value at any given address location by enforcing that only one copy exists wherever store occurs. Okay, that we have discussed. After each store to a location, other masters can obtain, obtain a new copy of the data for their own local cache, allowing multiple copies to exist. But even though there are multiple copies are existing, but all of them are getting the same data. That is what coherency is all about. Uh, to keep main memory up to date all the times, main memory is only, see in this diagram, this is the main memory. We have got three processes, master one, master two, master three. Each of them has its own associated L1 cache. Okay. Now the point is, if you are talking about location 100, if there is that element is present in this cache, if that element is present in this cache, all these caches, it should have the same data consistently across all these caches. Okay. Now it is possible that I may have the value updated here, but here it is not up to date. It is also possible. Okay, so that is what it says. There is no requirement to keep the main memory up to date all the times. But whenever you are going to remove this location from the cache, that is called as evict, this must be updated here. Next. Uh, ACE protocol. Next. ACE protocol enables the master components to determine whether a cache line is the only copy of a particular memory location or if there might be other copies of the same location. So what is that ACE protocol helps? It will tell whether specific cache line is the only copy of a particular memory location or does this system, I mean when you talk about this system, it will tell uh, whether the same cache line exists in the other masters also or not. If a cache line is the only copy, the master component can change the value of the cache line without modify, notifying any other master components in the system. If a cache line might also be present in another cache, a master component must notify the other cache using appropriate transaction. So this is where the uh, snoop transactions comes into picture. This is what is used by the uh, snoop interconnect to inform the masters that there is an update happened, uh, there is a change has happened so that they will update their data. Okay. Uh, to understand this concept of cash coherency, let us uh, understand the cash state model. A cash state model is used to determine whether an action is required when a component access a cash line. AS protocols defines the cash states. So let us first understand what happens if there is no cache coherency. First, what is the question? What if cache coherency is not maintained? Not maintained. So what will happen? So if you don't maintain cache coherency, what will happen is, I mean, what is meant by not maintained is, if I go back to this diagram, and if I say that cache coherency is not maintained, let us say it has got uh, location 100, at location 100, let's say data is 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, let's say uh, all of them have 1, 2, 3, 4. Assume that they are in a state where all the locations, all masters have an L1 cache. Master 1, Master 2, Master 3 has L1 cache. Now, I did, I did a store to this location which was changed to, let's say, A, B, C, D. It was changed to A, B, C, D. And assume that it has been updated into the main memory. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that these two locations, two and master three, are not aware of this update that happened, and main memory also got updated. Now, 
what happens is assume that master wants to read location 100 wants to read location 100 uh, now, now what is the problem it since it sees that location 100 is present in my local cache it will get 1 2 3 4 is that correct it is not correct because it is ideally supposed to be a b c d because we are in a shared memory system where the same memory is being shared by master 1 master 2 and master 3 we don't have see if we, we there wouldn't have been any requirement for cache coherency if there was a dedicated memory for master 1 if there was a dedicated for master 2 there was a dedicated memory for master 3 if we had such a system where we have dedicated memories for each master then there wouldn't have been any requirement for cache coherency here the coherency concept comes in because you uh, the same uh, master master whatever master updates the location the same location can be accessed by master 2 and master 3 so here there is a requirement where this abcd change that has happened into mass by the done by the master 1 needs to be notified to master 2 need to be notified to the master 3 that is where the ace transaction ace updates comes into picture like the updates that have happened into the existing channels and the new channels that have been added so let us briefly talk about what is the purpose of new channels. See the channels is that whenever, whenever uh, some transaction comes, uh, some update comes from here. So cache coherency has a special cache co coherent interconnect has a special circuitry where it initiates a snoop address transaction to master two and master three, indicating that some change has happened here. So then they will respond back through the snoop acknowledgement channel snoop response channel then if at all they want to give any data they will give the data okay. so this is what is involved in that in the mean process they also get the updated data if at all they need to update the data so this is a very brief about why cache coherency is required so let's again quickly revise if there is no cache coherency what happens the uh, the address locations uh, stored in various caches will be out of sync and uh, the process will be fetch fetching a wrong data and they will be doing a wrong processing of the data. Hence, my system will enter into an unknown behavior, unknown state. It will execute unknown uh, the inst instructions with unknown data. So now, let us further move on to cache state model. Please uh, do take a look at this diagram once. Uh, cache state model it is used to determine whether an action is required when a component acts cache line basically i we were discussing that sometime back because we were discussing that there is a way for one component to inform what is its state i mean whether does it require the update or not even master one will be able to update to the coherent interconnect what it wants to do so that is where uh, we talk about a cache state see a cache any a given cache can be in five states if you talk about a cache it can be uh, five states what are the five states it is decided based on three parameters whether it is a unique cache or whether it is shared what does it mean unique means the location is only present in the the cache line exists only in one cache so in that case what is the uh, what is the uh, the convenience since it is only existing in one cache uh, there is no need of snoop also there is there is no need to inform any other uh, ca uh, other cache about the update shared means what a cache line exists in multiple caches the second thing is clean and dirty clean means the cache line has the same value in the main memory see if the locate like we were taking example of location 100 that location 100 has the same data in cache and the same data is in main memory then it's called as clean uh if what is meant by dirty the cache line does not have the same value in the main memory doesn't match with the cache value the cache has been modified dirty indicates what cache has been modified with respect to the main memory and this cache must ensure that main memory is eventually updated uh that is the 
that is the significance of dirty condition. Okay. The third is valid and invalid. Valid means what? Cash line is present in the cash. Invalid means what? Cash line is not present in the cash. If cash line is not present in the cash, then that doesn't that master doesn't bother about that uh, address location, that specific address location itself. Because uh, if it doesn't exist, there is no need to uh, when I when I perform a read, anyway read doesn't come from my cash because it doesn't exist. So I don't bother about updating that. Uh, the second is what valid. So all these combinations, unique, shared, clean, and dirty, is only applicable in the valid conditions. In invalid conditions, they don't really matter for me. So if I take situation, I get total five possible combinations. One combination is whether the cash line is valid or invalid. Okay. Second is cash line is valid. If the cash line is valid, there can be four combinations that is unique dirty the cash can be cash state cash line state let's talk in this perspective uh, it's not the it's not just the cash what we are talking about is the cash line state now those who are uh, who probably forgot the concept of cash line what exactly is the cash line this is the minimum unit of communication between the uh, cash controller and the memory uh, now, how is it relevant to the cache coherency? Even coherency doesn't work at individual address location. It works on a cache line basis. The entire cache line is what is being compared, what is being updated in this whole context. Okay. Uh, coming back to this, we discussed about four combinations. Unique, share, dirty and clean. Uh, dirty, clean and dirty. This is the next combination. Next is valid and invalid. So if you take this, this is the combination that comes in. Now, further to it. So let us try to understand the significance of each of these states. There are five states. Invalid means uh, abbreviation is I. Why these are important is uh, when we see the ACE transactions, uh, the, the concept of snoop, uh, we will see AR snoop, AW snoop, all those things. At the time, these keywords will be used as part of those transactions. Uh, when it is invalid, cash line doesn't exist in the cache. Uh, and unique clean means what? The following routes apply for the apply to the cash line. See, understand everywhere it is to the cash line, cash line, cash line, cash line. It is not to the entire cache. See, it's not like entire cache is unique clean. It's not like entire cache is unique dirty. It's a Cash line is either invalid, means that doesn't exist in the local cache. What is cash line means? If I say 100, address 100, it's not just 100. If the cash line size is 32 bits, 32 bytes, it is from 100 to 100 plus 31. If you convert to hexadecimal, 1F it will come to. Means 100 to 11F is what we are talking about the one cash line. So this is either invalid. That means what? This location doesn't exist in my cache. If it is unique clean means what? It is clean. It is the whatever is the data that is present from 100 to 11 F is only present in my cache. No other cache has data in this location. And, and the data that I have in my cache matches with the data that is present in the main memory. Cache line is held only in this cache and it has not been modified with respect to the main memory. Uh, second is a component can perform a store to the cache line without notifying other caches because it is only unique. It is only present in this cache. A component uh, means component is what the master can perform a store to the cache line without notifying other caches because other caches do not have this location in their caches. What is next one? Unique dirty. Unique dirty indicates what? Uh, only my cache has the data, but uh, it doesn't match with the main memory. The following rule applies to the cache line, which is in unique dirty state. The first thing is what? The cache line is held only in this cache. The cache line is held only in this cache. Uh, cache line has been modified with respect to the main memory and this cache must uh, ensure that changes are subsequently notified to the memory because eventually uh, either in, 
either the time where I'm evicting the cache or uh, when, whenever there is a need to update the main memory, it should be uh, uh, written into the main memory. Third is a component can perform subsequent stores to the cache line without notifying other caches. So in any cache, there is no need to uh, notify the other caches. Now let us talk about shared clean. As the name suggests, shared means what? Whatever cache line we talked about, it can be present in, let's say this is master one. Let's say this is master two and master three. So master, each of them has its own local cache. So shared means that location is present here also, here, here also. And it need not be present here. If uh, it is present in more than, at least more than one cache, then it, it is in a shared state. So shared clean. The following rule will apply. The cache line might be shared with another cache. Uh, so there the, there the restrictions comes, right? Because whatever updates happens, uh, I do, master one does to a cache line, those updates might be notified. So the, now the question comes, this is an independent processor, this is an independent processor, then there is an interconnect. How do I update this? There is no channel for me, channel between one processor to other processor to update some changes. Because if I have to do that, then I have to keep doing for everyone uh, that I have done this update. So instead of doing that, I keep some common component called as cache coherent interconnect where I notify what I want to do. This in turn talks to other processors and informs them that this change has happened. Now, uh, coming back to shared clean, uh, cache line might be shared with another cache. It is not known if the cache line is modified with respect to the main memory. Okay. But this component is not responsible for updating the main memory. Uh, it is not known because it is in shared clean. Uh, it is it is not known if the cache line is modified. Whereas if it is cache dirty, uh, this cache must ensure that changes are subsequently notified to the memory. Understand? If it is clean means it, it doesn't bother. You see, but this component is not responsible for updating the main memory. Shared dirty means what? Let's say uh, if this is one processor, another, another. This could be in shared dirty. This could be in shared clean. This could be in shared clean. So then it is the responsibility of these components to component to update the main memory. So that is the difference between shared clean and shared dirty. In both the cases, it is in shared state only. But one will be in shared dirty, other will be in shared clean. Because only one owner can be there for any location. And so a component must notify other component before performing a store to the cache line. Now, what about shared dirty? The cache line might be shared with other cache. The cache line has been modified with respect to the main memory. Uh, and this cache must ensure that the changes are subsequently notified to the main memory because whichever is the whichever cache line is in dirty state, it is the responsibility of that cache line to update the main memory. See, you will do the, see the same thing in dirty here. This is one which is responsible for updating the main memory. This is the one which is up responsible for updating the main memory. Uh, next, notify other caches before performing a store to the cache line. Okay, with this understanding, let us uh, read further uh, rules related to the cache states. So again, I should read cache line state rules because the state is not specific to the cache. State is the uh, state of the cache line in one of the caches. A line use unique unique state must only be in one cache. I mean, if you are in, if if you say that some cache line is unique, it must be only in one cache. A line that is more in more than one cache must be in a shared state in every cache it is in. I mean, if it is more than one one share one cache means it must be in shared state. You cannot have let's say location hundred is there. In one cache, I cannot say that it is unique clean. Another state, same 100, I cannot say that shared clean. Because this unique and shared are conflicting with each other. So it can be either unique, it can be either shared. Uh, next. Obtains a new copy of a line. Other caches that also have a copy of the line might have the line in unique state must be notified to hold that line in a shared state. See, I may have a specific cache in a cache line in unique state, but uh, one another cache has updated the same data. So now what should happen? Everyone should change to shared state. When a cache discards a copy of line, there is no, re no requirement to inform other caches 
that also have a copy of line. I mean, if I discard the data, I don't need to inform anyone. This means that line in a shared state might be held in or, or held in only one cache also. See, there is a time where uh, two caches may have the same data in shared clean and shared dirty state or whatever, right? I may evict this one. So I don't, I can continue to be in unique uh, shared dirty. I don't need to change it to unique dirty. Okay. So basically unique dirty is a kind of subset of the shared dirty. Uh, next. Uh, a line that has been updated relative to the main memory must be in dirty state in one cache. See, the dirty state can only be in one, one cache. Every other cache should be shared clean. And it, it cannot be unique clean because if it is if it is in multiple caches, it should be shared. And now the point is what? If there are multiple caches, one should be shared dirty, other should be shared clean, shared clean, shared clean like that. Or it could be invalid. The invalid means what? That location doesn't exist in this cache at all. Next. Uh, updated relative to the main memory. And is in, so what is it? Line that has been updated related to the main memory and is only in one cache, then dirty state is, or dirty state, uh, state is only one cache, in that case. So this is the basic cache, uh, cache line state rules. Now, let us understand how these, how the uh, ACE related transactions helps achieve the cache coherency concept. Uh, for example, let's say we are performing a load operations from a shareable locations. Okay. I'm talking about the load operation of ARM protocol. We are, let's say we are performing that load operation. Uh, the master component loading. So for this purpose, what I'm going to take is, I will take this example. And to this example, let's try to understand how the cache coherency works in this case. Uh, a master component loading data from a shareable address location. A shareable address location means what? Uh, this address location can be part of multiple caches where the master component does not have a copy of this location in its, its local cache. Master component loading data from address location. Let's say uh, we'll talk about this master component. Let's say master one loading data from location 100. So 0x100 means hexadecimal 100. It is a shareable location. Shareable location means what? It can be part of the, I mean, it can be, it is allowed to be. It doesn't guarantee that it must be. Okay. Uh, this location where the master component does not have the copy of this data in local cache. See, master one, M1 doesn't have, uh, have 0x100 cache line. It's what it is in invalid state right now. Right now. Next. Uh, ma so how does this work? Let's try to understand. The master component issues read transaction on the read data channel because it wants to load the data. So what does it do? Master component issues a read transaction on the read address channel. So first let us understand what does it do. So in this case, it issues a read transaction, AR channel. Read address channel, it will issue a read transaction. Uh, the, inter, in, the interconnect determines whether any other cache holds the copy of the location by passing shareable address to other caching master component that can be understand. It does everything on the snoop address channel. So we, I, I told you, right, uh, ACE introduces three more channels, uh, snoop address channel, snoop response channel, snoop data channel. So in this case, the ACE uh, interconnect, the interconnect uh, sends, uh, when it gets the read request, when it gets the read transaction, uh, determines when request for loading. Now what master uh, interconnect will do? Interconnect uh, determines whether any other cache holds the copy of the location by passing 
shareable address to other caching master components it will send it will send information that this is the address for which read is being performed uh, that can that can hold the copy see it is possible that this location what we are trying to access may be present here that location x100 may be present here right so if that is present here it is requesting it is checking so what is the second step it is it is being done my interconnect generates a snoop address generates a snoop transaction to cache 2 and cache 3 at address 100 let's say the uh, read has happened at 100 second thing uh, my interconnect does is what it generates a snoop request to 100 at address 100 it indicates this information to the master 2 it indicates the same information to uh, master 3 also next uh, in this context these are snooped master components uh, on the snoop address channel one of the following now occurs i mean what can be the two possibilities uh, you have sent a request to master 2 and master 3 that location 100 may be present in master 2 may not be present same thing with master 3 it may be present it may not be present so there are two possibilities if any snooped master component holds the requested cache line okay that 100 is there it is expected to indicate this so it is asking interconnect is asking before it is going to the main memory it is asking local caches do you have this cache line with you so they are telling if they have since they have how do they respond they, res they provide the response on the snoop response channel so what do they do they let's say master 3 has the data so what master 3 will do it will send this communication that i have this this snoop this uh, this cache line is there with me so it will do it on a r uh, sorry s r or something uh, c r sorry c snoop response okay this is a c snoop address channel this is the snoop response channel uh, and it is providing the data data to the interconnect on the snoop data channel see whatever data it has got see what is the final intent uh, what we are achieving out of this is that location 100 definitely exists here main memory will have everything right idea is this latency is lot significantly lot it may take 10 cycles to get whereas if the request came here it will it is checking do you have do you have if you have it give me the data i will give it to cache that is the basic purpose the interconnect then provides the data with associated response to the initiating master component on the read data channel so this is if a master component uh, one of the master component has the requested cache line let's say if it can be either master 2 master 3 if no stupid master component holds the requested cache line means doesn't have the interconnect initiates the transaction to the main memory now interconnect knows that these two locations doesn't these two masters doesn't exist uh, doesn't have that cache line the interconnect initiates the transaction to the main memory effectively passing on the transaction from initiating master component i mean what is in summary what is it doing it is bypassing now now that it knows that data doesn't the uh, is not there in uh, master 2 master 3 doesn't have that cache line it it, it got the update so it will uh, how do that how do that get that update that update also it will get through snoop response channel that is cr channel through that it will get to know that i don't have the cache line i don't have the cache line so now it will forward the transaction to the main memory from there it gets it keeps that into the cache line and then it goes to, the data goes to the master memory. now the read data is supplied back to the master on the read channel as per the standard transaction the master component once the master component which master component the first one master one got the data uh, it indicates that transaction has completed by using r act signal see every i mean till this point it is all same as uh axi read okay only thing is before we go to the main memory the interconnect is checking whether this cache line exists with any of the other master caches if it exists it gets from them if it doesn't exist uh, it gets the data from the main memory uh, the master component indicates the transaction is completed by using our acknowledgement signal so our act is a output of master input to the 
cacheable interconnect. So cacheable interconnect now understand that this transaction has completed. Okay. Uh, similarly, there can be other uh, combinations like this is about uh, performing a uh, load operation from shareable locations. There can be similar thing performing store operations to shareable locations. When a master component stores to a cache line, we we'll see we are, in the previous case we were the master wanted to load the cache line because it doesn't have it. In this case master is uh, storing stores to a cache line it has a data and it is storing into the cache line to a shareable location it removes all other copies of the cache line because it is updating it has to remove all other cache lines uh, because whatever if you talk from a timeline perspective let's say this is the timeline let's say location 100 has one two three four here after some time here you are as one of the master is updating 100 with a b c d tell me which one should be held should we hold this one or should we hold this one we should only hold this one because going by the time scale this is the latest copy so this is the old copy this need to be removed so that is what it telling when a master stores to a cache line to a shareable location it removes all other copies of the cache line i mean all in the memories it will remove so what is that concept is called as it is called as invalidating i mean you're removing it's invalidating uh, then you may say uh, if you invalidate then we will lose the data in that we will move it into a shared clean state okay this ensures that master component has a unique copy of the cache line when it is when it is performing the store so the new value of the cache line is at that location is propagated to other cache as i said Whatever is the new value will be propagated to other caches when respective caching master component subsequently read the cache line. So whenever they read the cache line, their caches will also get updated. So there are four possible combinations. Store operations for a partial cache line. I mean, only part of the cache line you want to do store. Store operations for entire cache line. See, generally what might happen? Uh, my uh, processor, store operation, I may do only to specific location 100, right? Uh, I, I won't be doing to entire cache line. So in, that is what partial cache line. One is entire cache line. Uh, the third store operations where the cache line is already cached. Uh, I mean the that element already exists and you are storing you are uh, you update you want to update it. Next is overlapping store operations. So in the following uh, in the following sessions we will talk about all these. Uh, combinations of the store operations for shareable locations.